What's going on guys? My name is Ari and welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be talking about imposter syndrome. I'm gonna let you know what it is, why you should be so afraid of it, and give you my top three tips for how I've learned to combat it and move through it in my own life. So with that, let's get started. Imposter syndrome has a potentially long and confusing Google definition. So I'm gonna pop that up on the screen now and you can pause the screen if you wanna read that first. My definition or interpretation of imposter syndrome is essentially when you're a really successful person and you're in a position, you're doing good work, but you feel like a fraud. You feel like you're not worthy of the position. You feel like you're not doing a good job. You feel like there are people who are far more qualified than you who could do a better job. And you're kind of just asking yourself like, how did I get here? You don't believe in yourself. I've personally felt like an imposter in my life many times in friend groups, in organizations, in clubs. One of the most recent times, actually, I was just in university and I went to a real estate club meeting and within a matter of three months, I had convinced the e-board that they should bring me on as president for the next year with no understanding of real estate whatsoever, just because I showcased that interest. And as we progressed that group and more and more people joined the club, I just kept feeling like a fraud. I kept feeling like, when are they gonna notice that I don't actually know anything about real estate? When are they gonna recognize that I'm just interested in this stuff and that I'm not enough and that somebody could do this better? And I recognize now that that train of thought came from old traumas in my life. It came from this feeling of not being worthy and not belonging. It doesn't come from a healthy or correct place. And that's exactly why you should be concerned about this because it doesn't come from a healthy place. If you're moving through your life feeling like you're an imposter, feeling like you don't belong, like you're not enough, like it's just a matter of time before someone figures out that you're not supposed to be there, all the decisions that you make are gonna be out of fear. And when we act out of fear, we're constantly gonna be misjudging the situation. We're not gonna be confident in the direction that we're taking and we're not gonna step up into new roles and new opportunities and experiences in that eager way that's kind of like predisposes you to success. If you let imposter syndrome rule your life, not only are you probably not gonna succeed, you're probably gonna set yourself up for very intense failure. Now, I'm personally working through that now. It's the only reason that I was even able to start a YouTube channel in the first place, and I'm here talking to all of you. So I wanted to share my top three tips. Number one, credit yourself. When we credit ourselves for even the small tasks that we do and complete and are successful in, what we're doing is creating a positive flywheel. We're creating a vehicle where we're more motivated and more incentivized to think more positively and be more affirmative with ourselves. So credit yourself for even the small wins in your life. It doesn't need to be the massive projects because again, if you feel like you're an imposter, you're probably not gonna wanna take credit for those in the beginning anyway. So take credit for the small wins in your life. So for me example, I need to revamp my website and the thought of creating this business professional website when I feel like I haven't even done anything, I'm only 23 years old, is kind of scary for me. But I'll break that down into small tasks. So I'll break that down into choosing my theme colors and what my brand is gonna represent. I'll change that into looking at picking a theme and picking a web developer and all these little tasks that I feel like I'm allowed to slowly chip off and those push me in that positive flywheel towards eventually one day acknowledging, you know what? I've done the work, I've worked on the small parts, I am actually worthy of this role, I am worthy of the things that I'm trying to do here. The only other thing that I will add to that is Said in another way, positivity has a compounding effect. So if you force your brain to start acknowledging the little wins, you're gonna start seeing bigger wins elsewhere. Number two, correct your baseline of comparison. So a quote that I see thrown around the internet all the time is don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. And there's a fair point in that kind of cliche sentence that I think we've all seen at one point or another. And it's the fact that we're biased towards judging ourselves in the present versus where someone else is in their present. But we're not consciously recognizing that maybe the person that we're judging ourselves against is 30 years older than us and is 30 years down the line into their career or their aspirations or their interests. 
you have to bring your baseline of comparison back to yourself. Number one, always compare yourself to yourself. Who were you yesterday? Who were you a year ago? Who were you five years ago? How close are you getting to the version of you that you wanna be? Or if you are gonna compare yourself to other people, first of all, you should never be competing with somebody else, but compare yourself to other people who are in the same stage or state of life as you. Compare yourself to other beginners. Find a group of people who are at your experience level and work towards picking up on the little things that they've learned and where they are in their journey. Do not compare yourself to the expert, to the master who's been doing something for a career. When we compare ourselves to other people, especially people who are far older than us or more experienced than us, essentially what we're doing is alienating ourselves. We're closing ourselves off. We're gonna look at somebody and be like, I could never do that. I could never be that successful or that far off in my journey. And yeah, one day you could because they started exactly where you were. If you compare yourself to other people who are farther ahead of you, you're gonna create a negative flywheel. And just like positivity has a compounding effect, negativity also has a compounding effect and you're gonna push yourself in the wrong direction. So don't compare yourself to other people. If you are, compare yourself to people who are at least very similar to you and the position you are in in your life today. Number three. Acknowledge your shortfalls. And it sounds counterintuitive, it sounds ironic, but there is such a sense of freedom in being willing to step up and be vulnerable and say the three words, I don't know. And it's even better if you turn those three words into six words, I don't know, but that's okay. Because when we give ourselves space to recognize that we are not exceptional today, we're giving ourselves the freedom from that self-criticism and that personal judgment that's gonna go towards our creativity. It's gonna go towards our engagement and our excitement and our enthusiasm to be better. When we criticize ourselves, we're closing ourselves off and demotivating us to keep going. But when you can acknowledge the fact that you're not perfect and that it's gonna take time to be better, you're gonna give yourself the tools and the resources necessary to be better and to improve. Also, it's okay to not be exceptional. The only difference between expert and amateur, that delta, is practice. It's time and practice, but it's practice. It's something that you have to work on. It's something that you need to implement and push forward on daily. That's it. It's not that someone was born with some capability that is astronomical to yours. No, the most effective people are not people who have that genetic capability. They're not people who can focus. They're not people who aren't you know, biased to be super confident or arrogant. They're people who are willing to put in the work every day. And recognizing that, acknowledging that you've got room to grow, that's really what exists for you on the other side of fear. You can't let your fears and your doubts and your worries get in the way of your capabilities and your potential because that's the surest way to ensure that you feel like an imposter for the rest of your life. We don't want that. So yeah, imposter syndrome is real, but so are you. And you deserve to feel like you deserve to have a seat at the table. So those are my top three tips. I'd be curious to hear about what your top three tips are if you have them. So if you do comment down below, I will pin a question and it would be cool to kind of see what everyone else's tips are. But with all that being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next week. Yeah, who needs to like know how to make YouTube videos anyway? You just gotta press record.